Hey everybody, I'm Michael DiTullo. Welcome to my studio. I'm super excited to get into this third episode in this collaboration I'm doing with Wacom and Autodesk on using Fusion 360 and the Wacom Cintiq Pro. So in the first episode, I talked about doing thumbnail sketches and, and really taking the time to open up and get into your ideas, explore your ideas, not just go with the first, second, or third idea that comes to your brain, but really kind of dig deep and explore with these kind of low commitment iteration thumbnail sketches. In the second episode, I took one of those sketches out of Sketchbook and brought it into Fusion 360 where I built out a really quick CAD model. Now this CAD model of course didn't have internals or a lot of different complicated things going on, but it was a really good way to visualize this really rough sketch. Typically I might take another step in between the thumbnail sketches and the CAD model, but for this exercise I thought this would be a fun way to do it and especially with this product type being a smartphone, really easy to kind of visualize in CAD. In the third episode, I'm gonna take that CAD model and render it. One of the things I love about Fusion is you really have the ability to toggle back and forth between modeling and rendering. And that's really important to a designer like me because I'm always trying to check what the surfaces are doing. So I'm frequently kind of going back and forth those, between those two modes just to see how things really look, how, how they shape up. So in this episode, I'm gonna take that really smooth River Rock CAD model and render it out in some different materials. The first material I'm gonna take a look at here is copper. So again, just loving going between modeling and rendering, dragging and dropping different materials, keeping those materials between my model and the rendering space, which is really nice. I also love putting decals in my renderings. Those little details like that just really make the rendering pop and feel a bit more realistic. I think playing with this copper, it's very reflective. So I think I'm gonna actually use a combination between the polished copper material and the patinaed copper material. So we could show off that kind of dished surface and the chamfer around the lens area. So I think that will really help kind of highlight the design. Your CMF palette, your colors, your materials, and your finishes are so important in making the final rendering really pop for the client. So, so the client can really see what's going on in the design. So doing some really subtle shifts in materials like that between polish and patina for this copper are really gonna make the design show. Next, I wanna explore how this design might take different colors and materials. So I'm gonna move and copy it multiple times so I can really play with it. I'm gonna keep that copper one as a base, but let's develop a white one, maybe with a nice texture going on here, as well as a sandblasted and brushed combo aluminum one. And then let's get a really colorful one in here too, sea foamy blue. I really love being able to explore how a design looks in different colors and finishes so we can really see if it's lasting. In my experience, whenever I've designed something that's been a sales success, the company has wanted to immediately come back and launch more colors and materials. And so I like to do some of that work up front so that we know we have a variety of options to choose from. This is how a design goes from an initial idea, rough sketches, to an initial CAD model build, to some pretty polished CAD renderings that we could show a client. We could even show these in focus group tests or oftentimes have been a part of showing these to retail buyers so we get an early gauge on how many units we think a key retailer might be interested in buying. Things like that are really invaluable at this stage in the process so we can do some testing to validate the idea before really refining it further. Now this has been a super truncated process. Normally when I'm working, we're doing tons of research, we're working really collaboratively with mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, bringing in internals, and there's a lot of give and take back and forth and like what things could fit down to the millimeter. But I hope this little three episode series has shown you a little bit of how an industrial designer takes an idea from an initial notion to a pretty polished concept. Thanks for joining me, I hope you had fun.